We're here at the Miami Herald virtually with Professor Don Lehman of the University of Washington. Professor Lehman teaches structural engineering and also participates in various forensic analyses of collapses, usually about earthquakes, around the world. She's here with us today as a consultant to the Miami Herald, helping us understand what happened at Champlain Tower South on June 24th, 2021, when half of the tower tragically collapsed. Thank you so much for being here with us, Professor. Well, thank you for inviting me. So tell us, when you start a forensic analysis of a collapse, what do you do first? So the first thing that we do is the first thing, honestly, that the public does as well, which is that we start looking at the photographs. Uh, and so that was where I started when uh, this tragic collapse happened that really shocked the whole structural engineering community. And so the first thing that I did was started looking at the photographs of the building. But the second thing that we do is that we look at the structural drawing. So this is something that the layperson probably wouldn't do, but we know, especially for a building that is this type of construction, which is reinforced concrete construction, that there are a lot, there's a lot of information that we can't see in those drawings. And so what we would like to do and what I do is I take the photographs and I take the drawings and I start pairing them and matching them so that I can understand what was the intent of the designer of what was supposed to be in the building. And then I can match that to what I see in the photographs. What are we looking at here? Um, I see a drawing and I see the building what are the elements you can see in that, that pile of what to the layperson looks like rubble? So what we're looking at here is a plan of a typical floor of the building. So this is above the pool deck. Maybe some of your readers understand that a lot of us feel that the initial damage and from the reports, it seems that the initial damage in the pool deck. Here, what I'm showing is a typical floor um, and what I'm looking at is what do I see in the standing portion of the building? So I clearly see that, you know, there are some cars below and I can see that there's a whole portion of the building that's standing. And the first thing that I noticed is you can see there's a portion of the building that looks like a wall. I don't know how else to explain it, but that is actually a sheer wall. That's a, a very strong, stiff structural element in the building that's designed to take vertical load as well as horizontal load. So horizontal load in the case of this particular site would be wind load and hurricane loading. And so what I see is that the building failed right at that wall that we see. Now I move out towards the rubble pile to see if I can see anything there. And one of the things that stood out to me the most is if you look just beyond that wall that we were just talking about, there's a rectangle that's um, sort of a beige color. And when I look in at that rectangle, um, what I notice is actually there's a um, portion that's gray because it's concrete, and that is actually showing the stairwell. So I know that that is the structural wall that was attached to the stairwell in the portion of the building that collapsed. So those are the types of things that I look for from a view like this, which is an aerial view. This collapse happened just over a month ago. Um, how long does it take to complete a forensic analysis and, and for um, the National Institute of Standards and Technology who we know are, are on site, they are the team that is going to ultimately do this official analysis of this collapse. How long does that, that take and what can we expect from here? Right, that's a really good question. It's a hard question to answer, but I would say that um, rather than thinking about complete to the very end, it might be more helpful to think about phases of that investigation. So what I would expect is that um, they are, as, you, as your readers probably know, they were on site. They have brought back different components from the rubble pile. And so what I would expect is that they are doing a multi-phase investigation. So one is to really understand the engineering properties of the as built, as existing now conditions of the concrete and the steel. So that's obviously something that's very important in the structural design. And we wanna know, does what was in the drawings meet what was actually in the building? 
Um, the second thing that they're probably going to think about doing is maybe doing some experiments to understand some of the failure modes that we've seen, especially your readers have probably read about slab columns. Sometimes people term it punching shear failure. So they probably are going to have a second series of investigations looking at those experimentally. And then the third part of the investigation is probably going to be uh, what we would term a nonlinear structural analysis of the entire building trying to understand what could have triggered this event and then what the progression of collapse was. So if you do all of that, it's usually years. It's probably two years to maybe even four years for that full complete investigation. There are a lot of people living in high rises in Miami who really appreciate this explanation, Professor. Um, and thank you so much for being here with us today. And I'm sure we'll hear from you again soon. Thank you.